And welcome again to the Study Bible Bible Study, where we study the Bible with Study Bibles. And this is our second session on Thessalonians, Wesleyan Study, Chapter 4, 413. Now, Revelation 17, 14 tells us, And these shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall conquer them, for he is Lord of lords, he is King of kings. And they who are with him are called and chosen and faithful. God bless and amen. Okay, in Romans 8.35. Who, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? For as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. For we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, and nay, and all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love that is in our, from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay, let's get back into it. Okay. Now, in the language that is strong and Persuasive. Paul assures the Thessalonians that their hope rests upon the authority of God himself. This mighty conviction Paul cherishes now shares upon the authority of the word of the Lord. Now the phrase God will bring with him is emphatic. God himself will attend to the departed saints. Believers are united to God through Christ the Son. And hence, the resurrection and ultimate victory of Christ the head must include and guarantee the resurrection and the final triumph. All of who are in him as members of his glorious body, the apostle anticipates the presence of a living generation of believers when Christ returns. We that are alive, that are left unto the coming of the Lord, believers then alive upon the earth, will go forth to meet their glorious Lord, but priority is given to the saints who have fallen asleep. Not only will the departed saints not be left behind, but the living believers will stand aside, as it were, to allow the res resurrected saints to precede them. The first step in this parousia, therefore, according to this text, will be the resurrection of those who are asleep in Jesus. Now, certain significant events, however, precede the actual raising of the dead. According to verse 16, in keeping with the promise given by our Lord on the eve of his crucifixion in John 14, 3, Paul affirms most emphatically that it is the Lord himself, not another, not some celestial proxy who will return at, who will return at his return. The order of events will unfold, thus, the descent to the Lord himself, the second, the shout that proclaims his coming, and third, the voice of the archangel, fourth, the sounding of the trumpet, the raising, fifth, the raising of the departed saints, sixth, the transformation of, then, living believers, and seven, the reunion of all believers in Christ. Now the glorious panorama begins obviously with the personal descent of Christ in fulfillment of his own promise which was confirmed by heavenly witnesses at the time of his ascension. Now the word himself draws attention to the fact that it is the Lord in his august presence who will descend and thereby assures the certainty of his own people's resurrection. Now the Lord's descent will be announced with a shout a word which was formerly used to prod sailors at their oars or soldiers moving into battle. Now moreover, the voice of the archangel will be heard and the trump of God will sound forth. Events will move in rapid sequence. If not simultaneously, Paul declares elsewhere that we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. That's 1 Corinthians 15, 52. Now we are thus assured that the Lord himself will return, that the parted saints will be raised to life first, that living believers will then be changed, metamorphosized, metamorphosed, 
and that the entire body of the redeemed will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. We will do well, perhaps, to guard against a too dogmatic interpretation of certain details in connection with the Perusia. For there are a number of facts and events directly and indirectly related to the Lord's return that are not even mentioned in this text. For example, nothing is said of the actual bodily transformation that will occur in the bodies of either the raised saints or the living believers then upon the earth. Nor does this passage describe the actual meeting in the air, nor the process by which believers will be glorified and rewarded. However, Paul is silent here with respect to the resurrection and the judgment of the impenitent. The impenitent. In short, the apostle does not presume to answer all questions relating to the doctrine of the last things. In his passage, in this passage, his purpose is corrective and comforting, and so shall we ever be with the Lord as us believers in the Lord. We are assured our salvation through his victory on the cross. Now notice the preposition with the Lord. Notice with is used here. Now Paul uses sin rather than meta. And they're talking about a Greek translation here, I believe. A choice that is significant is that it expresses an intimate union, not a mere companionship. So the former, the sin, the S-Y-N, rather than the meta, the M-E-T-A, a choice that is significant. It expresses intimate union, not mere companionship. Now wherefore, comfort one also with these words. So then, says the Apostle, in view of the glorious certainties, let believers not only refrain from the unbecoming grief that bespeaks unbelief, not only draw personal comfort from the abiding presence of the Blessed Comforter, but let each become the comforter of others. Now number two, we got Article 2, the coming events. Okay, the coming events, this would be Thessalonians, just the beginning of chapter 5. Chapter 5, 1 to 11. I just want to look at the beginning of chapter 5 here. Now, but concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that you ought to be written unto you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. When they are saying, Peace and safety, then suddenly destruction cometh upon them, as travaileth upon a woman with child. And they shall in no wise escape, but ye, brethren, are not in darkness. And that day should overtake you as a thief, for you are sons of light, you are sons of the day. We are not of the night, we are not of darkness. So then let us not sleep as do the rest, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that are drunken are drunken in the night. But let us, since we are of the day, be sober, putting on the breast place of faith and love, the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet the hope and the helmet of salvation. For the God appointed us not unto wrath, but unto obtaining the salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, exhort one another and build each other up, even also you do. Now in the preceding chapter, Paul undertook to correct certain misapprehensions concerning the Lord's return. Now he continues his treatment of this subject by discussing events that will be associated with the Perusia. He reiterates the solemn warnings in view of Christ's return. Now the faith of the believers must exhibit they must exhibit itself in a trustful obedience and calm expectancy. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. There's many passages in the Bible about, about being patient. 
Even King David himself wrote it in his Psalms, right? Selah. Selah is to stop, to pause, to take a breath, to smell the roses, right? To have a clear thought. Now, the times and the seasons. In verse 1, we have always we have always intrigued certain believers even after our lord's resurrection he found it necessary caution his anxious disciples on this point but instead he gave a detailed prophetic timetable instead of a detailed prophetic timetable he gave them a definite commission of a worldwide missionary conquest now the word times, according to Robertson, suggests an extended period, whereas seasons refer to a more indefinite space of time. Trench interrupts times as the succession of moments and seasons as the critical epoch making. Here, as elsewhere in the New Testament, the terms of the phrase, the times and seasons are in, the times and seasons are in the plural. The reason is clear. Paul is thinking of a number of incidents attending incidents attending the preparation and the accomplishment of the second advent, the second coming, and occurring at different times. The second advent, advent is the second advent is the second coming. It's for people who are non-Catholics who listen and just so you know, Advent means the second coming. Catholics don't exactly own the word. If you're not aware of that out there, Catholics don't own words and meanings, but this is, I'm guessing Wesley wasn't a Catholic. But anyways, Romans 8, 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted for as. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. But nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is our Wesleyan study on, or Wesleyan read on, 1 Thessalonians 4. And Revelation 17, 14 tells us in this, and and these shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall conquer them. For he is Lord of lords, he is King of kings, and they who are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And God bless and amen. And this is the Study Bible Bible Study, where we study the Bible with study Bibles and other miscellaneous commentaries. Amen.